President Emmanuel Macron has denounced a knife attack that killed three people in a church in Nice as Islamist terrorism. Speaking from the scene, he warned that France was under attack for its values. Have a listen. Une fois encore, notre pays... Once again, our country has been struck by an Islamist terrorist attack. Once again this morning, three of our fellow citizens were killed in Nice at the Notre Dame Basilica here, and clearly, the whole of France is attacked. Well, as we were hearing, the attack happened at the Notre Dame Basilica just after 9 o'clock in the morning. The details are grim. Police say one of the victims, a woman, was virtually beheaded. Another man suffered deep wounds to the throat. Here's what happened next. <laughs> Well, police stormed the basilica and shot the suspect. We told, we're told he had also stabbed a third victim, a woman. She fled to a nearby bar but died of her injuries. Chloe Mathy and her partner live about 50 metres from the church. This was her account. We heard many people um, shouting in the streets. So we, 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 we saw by the windows that there were many, many, many policemen uh, coming and uh, then we heard gunshots, many gunshots, and more and more um, policemen. And we saw, um, we saw, um, we we didn't see the the, the attack that we just heard. Well, Tom Vania is a journalism student who was filming at the scene shortly after the attack. This is what he told the BBC. This is uh, the main street in Nice, the, where the. The church is um, the, at morning at uh, at 9 a.m. like this morning. There were a lot of people uh, in front of this church, so it, it's a, a very big symbol of the city who who is touched today. Uh, we saw a, a woman who knows the, the guardian of the of the church, uh, and she was crying. Uh, a lot of people come here and cry. Uh, because uh, this, is a, this is a terrible attack. Well, in Paris, Parliament was sitting to discuss COVID-19 measures as news of the attack came through. Proceedings were put on hold as politicians there observed a minute's silence to honour the lives of those lost in the attack. Within hours, Emmanuel Macron arrived at the scene, raising the national security alert to its highest level. Here's what else he said. This morning, we decided to raise the degree of vigilance everywhere in France to adapt to the terrorist threat. I have decided that in the coming hours, our troops will be increasingly mobilized and within Operation Sentinel, we will go from 3,000 to 7,000 soldiers deployed across the country. That means we will be in a position to protect all places of worship, particularly churches, of course, so that All Saints Day can be celebrated in the right conditions. Well, in 2016, you'll remember Nice was rocked by another terrorist attack when a truck ploughed through crowds of people celebrating Bastille Day. And the Notre Dame Basilica was a place where many would pray for the dozens that were killed there. Our correspondent, Lucy Williamson, is there. Well, here in Nice tonight, Notre Dame is ringed with security. Forensics teams are still working away inside. And passers-by here, when they pass the church, they stop, they stand for a minute in silence in this city already bruised by a major terrorist attack four years ago. Well, world leaders have been condemning what happened in Nice. The European Union president, uh, Commission president, rather, Ursula von der Leyen, has said the whole of Europe stands in solidarity with France and remains united and determined in the face of barbarism and fanaticism. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson tweeted this message in English and French. I'm appalled to hear the news from Nice of a barbaric attack at the Notre Dame Basilica. Pope Francis tweeted, I'm close to the Catholic community of Nice mourning the attack that sowed death in a place of prayer and consolation. Well, there have been other incidents in France today. One of them happened in nearby Avignon in the district of Montfavet. Police shot dead a man who allegedly threatened passers-by and police in the street with a handgun. And in Lyon, a young Afghan man allegedly armed with a 30-centimetre long knife was arrested as he attempted to board a tram. Police say he was already known to them. Well, the incidents come at a sensitive time. France is still reeling from the beheading of the teacher, Samuel Paty, earlier this month in a suburb of Paris. Mr Paty, you'll remember, had shown his pupils cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in a class on freedom of expression. Muslims believe that any depiction of the Prophet is blasphemous. 
In the wake of the attack, France vowed to crack down on what it calls radical Islam. French police launched a series of raids targeting Islamist networks. They also shut down a major mosque and some Muslim aid groups. The Interior Minister Gérard Damanin vowed there would be not a moment's respite for enemies of the Republic. Let's talk to our Europe regional editor, Mike Sanders. Uh, Mike, what more do we know about the suspect? Well, according to a document that was found at the scene, his name is Brahim al Sawi, and he's a 21-year-old Tunisian. Now, that has to be confirmed, and they're checking the identity. But based on that name, police think he entered Italy on the September the 20th uh, uh, with some people smugglers, and he was detained on the island of Lampedusa uh, for 14 days, held in quarantine because of the coronavirus restrictions. He was then transferred to a center in Bari, also in, in southern Italy, and he seems to have entered France in early October. Now, investigators both in France, Italy and Tunisia are looking at uh, this sequence of events and trying to find out where he was between entering France and uh, allegedly making this attack. So that's the kind of line of inquiry they're looking at. And just uh, where do we expect the path this investigation to take? Well, we know that if, th if that name is correct, he was already under investigation in Italy for illegally entering. Now, that means that uh, he wouldn't really have had a chance of political asylum. He's not claimed asylum in France. And this is, the worry is that was he actually coming as an economic migrant or did he come expressly to carry out an attack? And that's the kind of line they'll be looking at. And of course, it wouldn't be the first time that sort of thing had happened because there was a Tunisian called Anis Amri who uh, entered Italy in uh, 2011. And he went on five years later to commit the attack on the Christmas market in Berlin in 2016 when he drove a lorry into a crowded market outside a church and killed 12 people. OK, Mike, uh, thank you very much for that update. Our Europe regional editor, Mike Sanders. Well, Turkey has condemned the attack. In a statement, its foreign ministry said, there can be no reason to excuse the killing of a human being and justify violence. Now, this comes as the French government's attempt to crack down on radical Islam has angered Turkey and other Muslim countries. The Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, has called for a boycott of French goods. The situation worsened after a cartoon of Mr Erdogan appeared in the satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo this week. Here's Ched Kasupolo from the BBC's Turkish service on the response from Ankara. The foreign minister has been quick to react because France and obviously Monsieur, Mr Macron has been on top of the agenda and Macron's policy over separatism, Islamic separatism, uh, has been on top of the agenda in Turkey because we see that uh, Mr Erdogan is representing himself as the defender of Islamist values across the world and defends um, Islam and the Muslim values. Even yesterday, we heard him saying that the Western leaders, countries criticizing um, Muhammad, uh, uh, Muhammad and uh, making caricatures are launching uh, crusades. So we see him as the main defender of Islamist values. Well, there have been protests against President Macron's defence of the cartoon in several Muslim-majority countries. These pictures come from southwest Pakistan. Large crowds gathered. They set pictures of President Macron alight. And this is Mali. Thousands gathered in the Grand Mosque in the capital, Bamako. And this is a scene in Iran, a protest being held outside the French embassy in Tehran. Our Middle East correspondent Martin Patience has tweeted, you won't find any Middle Eastern leader defending Macron. The best France can hope for is that the leaders say nothing. And he's included a tweet referencing the Lebanese president's response. Let's hear from Martin now. What's interesting about the Middle East is in some ways we've seen a muted response. Yes, we have seen some French goods taken off the, supermarket, uh, off the supermarket shelves. Yes, we have seen some small scale protests. And then we saw the incident earlier today in Saudi Arabia when a French guard outside the consulate in the coastal city of Jeddah uh, was attacked. His injuries are not believed to be life threatening and it still isn't clear what the motivation for that attack is. 
But there is anger in the Middle East because they feel, especially uh, President Macron, that he is not respecting Islam by defending the French cartoon, uh, the Charlie Hebdo, defending their right to uh, publish pictures of the Prophet Muhammad. And many Muslims, including moderate Muslims, find that insulting uh, uh, and uh, Macron's uh, position uh, as un untenable. Well, next, let's hear from Nabila Ramdani, a French Islamic affairs journalist here in London. The Macron administration has effectively incorporated cartoons mocking Islam into its domestic policies. Up until now, Charlie Hebdo images portraying the Prophet Muhammad as a thoroughly pathetic uh, figure uh, who is there to be mocked along with uh, all the followers of Islam have been considered marginal and anti-establishment. But Macron has changed all that. He promised that he would not renounce the caricature and defend them as part of uh, French culture and indeed as part of France's global image. And by doing so, uh, Macron has effectively made the caricatures uh, mainstream and indeed uh, normalized them uh, in its bid, uh, some uh, uh, people say, to put Muslims uh, in their place. Well, this is what President Macron said today. If we've been attacked again, it's because of our values, our taste for freedom, the possibility there is here to believe freely and not to give in to any terror. Let me say this very clearly again, we will never give in. Emmanuel Macron speaking earlier. Let's talk to Jeremy Bowen, our Middle East editor. Jeremy, just put this more into context. Why is France being targeted like this? Well, the main uh, nexus of this seems to be President Erdogan of Turkey versus President Macron of France. And it's not the first time that, that words have been exchanged. Uh, I think you can say that President Erdogan, if he wants to target a European leader on these kinds of issues, on Islamist issues, um, his support, Erdogan's own desire, I think, to present himself as a leader of Muslims, uh, then he might choose President Macron, because as well as that, there have been disputes about other things, not about religion, strategic disputes, disputes about France's support for Armenia in the, uh, the current battles over the enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh, because the Turks have been very much supporting the other side, the Azeri side. As well as that, there's the uh, dispute over mineral rights in the eastern Mediterranean, that's with Greece. The, the French have not been weighing in on Turkey's side there at all. So there's an agenda at work. But there's also something I think a lot more fundamental going on. Uh, and that is that, uh, as you've been hearing, uh, people, Muslims who are not at all extremist, are very insulted by cartoons which they would say defame their prophet. But at the same time, for the French and for the French state, the principle of secularism, the principle of the separation of religion and the state, and particularly as well, the principle that if they want to mock religion, any religion, they're allowed to do it, that is something that is just as fundamental for them. So it's hard to see quite where they come together until maybe this dies down a bit. Yeah, and on that note, Jeremy, I mean, looking at the war of words that's going on, it doesn't seem there's much indication at the moment of any of this calming down. No, there isn't. I think it's got a little way to run, and uh, heaven forbid there'll be any more attacks. But I think that, you know, the French have uh, gone through a lot of this kind of thing in the last few years, and it's something which clearly Macron is more than sick of, and I think he's... The French are as well. And, uh, you know, in Turkey, there's speculation that one of his uh, parts of his own agenda is to try to present himself as the uh, to perhaps the more right of centre French as a as a supporter of, uh, of French nationalism, while at the same time Erdogan is seeing is being seen in France as someone who's playing his own brand of games, you know, but in the end of it, there there are, you know, strong currents going on in the world which result in these kinds of things happening. It's only a tiny minority of people who carry them out, but they have enormous, um, apart from spreading human misery, uh, they have enormous political resonances as well.